Detroit Park Street family. I uh, hope everyone is doing well and uh, trying to keep in contact with everybody, uh, texting and calling things such as that, and uh, seeing that most folks seem to be doing pretty well and glad to hear that. I do want to come to you here on a Wednesday when we would normally be having our Bible study and prayer time and uh, just share a thought with you and um, then also uh, just kind of look at the prayer bulletin that I have again and uh, mention a few things to pray for and then uh, hopefully uh, you'll be able to watch this with your family and uh, then spend some time in prayer as a family. I hope you've been taking advantage of that. Uh, I did want to, uh, as I've been going through um, my Bible reading over the last a few days. I've uh, been going through the Minor Prophets, uh, which uh, has been uh, kind of interesting. A lot of a lot of things about prophecy in the Minor Prophets and a lot of different things. But one that I read uh, the other day, uh, I think it was, uh, might have been Saturday or, or Monday. I can't remember which day it was. But um, I was in the book of Jonah. And as I was reading through the book of Jonah, I thought it was interesting uh, that as we go through our time of shelter in place and stay at home and quarantine, that really Jonah was kind of one of the first people to ever be quarantined. Uh, God put him in the belly of a well for three days to talk to him, to get his attention. And it kind of spoke to my heart in that manner. And so I want to read a few verses here. So if you have your Bible, I'd encourage you to open up to the book of Jonah. And uh, that's uh, one of the minor prophets right after Obadiah. Uh, if that helps you at all to find it. But Jonah, and uh, we, we know this story well, but I thought it was interesting. I'll read a, a couple of verses here and then uh, give you some thoughts about this book. And then we'll mention a few prayer requests and then pray and be done. But in Jonah chapter 1, the Bible tells us, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise. Go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof, and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. And then uh, if you look in verse number 17, verse number 17 tells us in chapter 1 now the lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up jonah and jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights and then chapter 2 and in verse number 1 continues on it says then jonah prayed unto the lord his god out of the fish's belly and then in chapter 3 and in verse number 1 we find once again it says and the word of the lord came unto jonah the second time saying arise go unto nineveh and so uh, some things that I, I thought about as I was looking through this was we see two times that God speaks to Jonah, once before the belly of the well and once after the belly of the well. And right sandwiched in between those two, we see Jonah speaking to God out of the belly of the well. And it occurred to me that, you know, we're going through this time of affliction. We're going through this time of uh, this virus going through our nation, uh, having to stay at home, being quarantined, everything's going on. And God has been speaking to us before this, and certainly God will speak to us after this, but right now in this time is the time for us to speak to God, to uh, take time to pray and go to God and, and beseech God and, and go on behalf of, uh, that's, that's why you know, on Wednesday nights we're still trying to encourage people to pray because it is important that we, we take this time that God has stopped our lives to speak to him. But I thought, you know, it was kind of interesting to me as I looked at what happened to Jonah in the belly of this whale. And, um, you know, we're quarantined and, and we're having to stay at home. And I thought to myself, well, at least it's not a whale's belly. I mean, that, that would be bad. I think three days and three nights in the belly of a whale certainly equates to having to be quarantined at home for a month or whatever. But I looked at a few things and one of the first things that I saw that God did for Jonah in this time is he, he adjusted his attention. Whereas before Jonah was a prophet of God, Jonah was a man of God, but he was serving in his place in Zebulun where he was from. And that was really just his sphere of influence. But then God came to him and told him to go do something else. It was outside of his comfort zone. It wasn't what he wanted to do. 
And uh, that spoke to me because a lot of times we can get involved in ministry that we like, we can get involved in ministry that we want, we can get involved in doing what we have to do right in front of us. And when God calls us to do something else, maybe we're not so eager to do that. And that was Jonah's case. God was telling him, hey, I have somebody way off over here, way far away from where you are, outside your comfort zone, that I want you to personally go and tell about me. And Jonah didn't like that. And he, to me, as I look at this, Jonah had all his attention on himself, on what he had going on, on what he wanted to do. And that's why he, he paid the fare of the ship, got into the ship and took off. And when that storm was tossing, that ship around the, the sea there, Jonah was asleep in the in the 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 bottom of that ship why because his attention was on himself uh, everything that he was doing was about him he didn't want to follow god he didn't want to do what god said it was all about doing what jonah wanted to do but guess what god put him in a place that made him adjust his attention look in verse number four of chapter two he says then i said i am cast out of thy sight yet i will look again toward thy holy temple. In verse number seven, when my soul fainteth within me, I remember the Lord and my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. Twice there he, he mentions about looking back to God. And I think that that's where we're at in our lives right now, that we need to get our attention off of all the plans that we had. Uh, maybe we, we had a full uh, spring calendar for the church. Now God's adjusting our attention. We had a full personal uh, calendar. Maybe we were going to be involved in sports or we we're going to be involved in, in uh, a vacation or doing this or doing that. Now God is adjusting our attention to where everything has been wiped clean. Our calendar no longer is full. He's saying, hey, look back to me. Get your attention back on me. And so I see here that Jonah had his attention adjusted. And then I see in verse number nine, it affected his attitude. You say, well, how, what, what do you see about that? Well, in verse number nine, he says, but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that, that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. See, Jonah had a problem with what God was wanting him to do because he didn't want to go to the people that God was calling him to go to. Um, his attitude was wrong. It's not about me serving God. It's about God using me to be able to serve him. Uh, God doesn't call me just to do that which I like. God calls me to do that which he likes. And so Jonah had to get his uh, attention back on God. He had to get his attitude turned back around to seeing what God wanted him to do and why God wanted him to do it. He was sending him to the Ninevites. These were, were people that uh, persecuted his people. These were people that he did not like. These were people that uh, were, were not his friends. But it didn't matter because it was the calling that God was calling him to. And so in the belly of this well, we see that God is, is working on his attitude. And he says, I'm going to pay that that I vowed. See, God had called him to be a prophet. God had called him uh, to, to be a minister. And now God was calling him to go minister. But he didn't have the right attitude for it. And, and what I like is he said, salvation is of the Lord. We have to understand it's not up to us to choose who God saves. It's up to God. We're just to be the instrument. We're to be the, uh, the mouthpiece of God. And we have to have our attitude right towards God for God to be able to use us. It took putting him in quarantine, so to speak, in the belly of this fish for God to get him to understand that, hey, it doesn't matter what you think, Jonah. This is what I'm wanting you to do. And then the third thing that I thought was interesting here in uh, Jonah is he altered his activity. You know, Jonah was, was doing what he wanted to do there where he lived. And yet God said, here's what I want you to do. And what did Jonah do? He did the opposite. But in chapter 3, we see, thank God for second chances. He said, the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. And then in verse number three, we see, so Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. 
you know, as we go through these these past few days as we've gone through those and we're currently in the present and now we're looking toward the future and, and how much longer will this last and and how will it touch and affect our family. I, as we, we look towards those things, uh, I'm looking personally at what God is going to do with me after this time of quarantine, after this time of shelter. Now, what, what is God trying to teach me right now that he's going to bring me to do after we're done with what we're going through. You see, the reason that Jonah went through this time of being in the belly of the well was because God had people over here that he wanted to do a work in. And Jonah wasn't on board. But God used this time to get him on board, to go do what he wanted him to do. Why? Because over in chapter number three, he says, should I not spare Nineveh, that great city? He wanted to spare Nineveh. Uh, and, and Jonah knew that. Even in verse number 10, it says, And God saw their works, talking about the Ninevites, after they repented and said they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he had said he would do unto them, and he did it not. What is God doing through this? I don't know. But I'm looking forward to what God's going to do after this. If we'll listen to him and turn our attention back to him so that he can speak to us, and show us what he wants us to do if we'll listen. See, it, it took all this for Jonah to be stopped to go and do what God wanted him to do. You say, would, would God use that to get a hold of my attention? Yes, he would. I mean, think about what, what other people went through for God to get Jonah where he wanted him to be. There was a ship full of sailors that they lost. You talk about their economy being ruined. Their economy, they threw everything on that ship overboard. They no longer had the wares that they were supposed to sell to the fees that they had charged to, to move those things, those were gone. Why? Because Jonah and God were having a conversation and God was trying to get Jonah to do what God wanted him to do. And so I think as Christians especially, we need to look and see what is God using this time for in my life? Is there something that he's trying to teach me to do? Why is he, why is he allowing me to, to go through this time? Why is he allowing our nation to go through this time? and make sure that we as Christians are where we should be so that when we come out the other side of this, uh, the, this, this virus, this sickness, this quarantine, this stay at home, we're prepared to go and do what God is going to have us to go and do because there's going to come a day when we're going to be back in church. We're going to be back to, to being able to go out and, and call on people and, and reach out and try to affect our city, our county, our community, our state, our nation, in this world for Christ. And so are we spending the time right now finding out what is my step that you have for me after this quarantine? And so I encourage you, look to God. See what he's trying to do in your life. I'm spending time trying to figure, God, what are you going to do in my life after this is done? Not just what you're doing right now, but what, what is the future step going to be when we are able to get back to kind of what will be the new normal at that time. And so I just encourage you to think about it, uh, ponder it, pray about it, uh, see God's face and uh, see what he has for you during this time, what he has for your family. And so I hope that'll be an encouragement to you because the good thing about that is, is even though Jonah had to be in that time, he came through that time. And uh, the Bible over and over again says, this too shall pass or it, and it came to pass. We know this time is going to pass. Eventually we will get through this, but we need to be ready that when we do, that we're raring to go to do what God wants us to do and, and not just return. I mean, Jonah could have been, went through that time in the belly of the well, got, got vomited out on that beach and then went back to Zebulun where he was from and went right back to where God did not want him to be, not doing what God would have him to do. And so let, let's look to see what God wants to change in us through this time. Well, let me look at this prayer bulletin with you real quick. And uh, uh, it's, mine's getting kind of tattered. It's a, it's a few weeks old. Uh, but uh, I'll, I'll share with you a few things on here. Just continue to pray for those in our church that are uh, dealing with illness outside of this. Uh, of course, uh, just to mention a, a few folks uh, by first name. We'll do that. And I think that'd be all right. Miss Emma Jean, she had a fall. She's recovering uh, in rehab now. So pray for her and uh, everything that goes along with that. I, I spoke to her on the phone, and I'll be honest with you, I called her to be an encouragement, and bless her heart, she was an encouragement to me. 
And uh, I, I, it pretty much knocked off all the complaints that I had that I was going to share uh, with my wife later on today. So now I don't have any complaints. I just have to go home and, and try to be an encouragement to her now as well. So uh, pray for her. Pray for the, the many families in our church that are being affected by this, whether through employment uh, or uh, different things like that, uh, loss of, of job, maybe loss of income. And certainly, um, if, if there's any way the church can help, uh, please let us know. Uh, we can't help if we don't know. And uh, unfortunately, I have not risen to the level of mind reader yet. And uh, so some, sometimes people will say, well, uh, I wish you could have helped me. Well, we, we have to know in order to be a help. So if you know somebody that's sick, uh, somebody that, that maybe needs some help uh, financially or, or otherwise, please let us know so that we can be a help. Uh, so remember the special needs in our church. Remember uh, our expectant mother and uh, pray for her protection through this time. Continue to pray for our young adults uh, that have come home. Uh, many of them are just kind of in a, a waiting period, uh, as all of us are. Remember our friends and family in the armed forces as uh, they're throughout uh, the nation and uh, the, the world on our behalf. Remember sickness in our, in our church family. We have some that are recovering from surgery, some that are recovering from uh, just uh, illness and different things. So pray for them. Pray for our missionaries at this time. Uh, pray for uh, those in the salvation list. Uh, we mentioned uh, last week, I think, that many of those, this might be one of the best times to be able to speak uh, to them about their soul. And so keep that in mind, be uh, prayerful for that. Remember those that are not connected necessarily with our church as far as membership, but certainly by friendship. Uh, remember them as they recover from surgery. Uh, many, many different ones uh, that we know, Brother uh, Don, uh, as he's recovering from uh, liver cancer and, and surgery there. Uh, then uh, remember to pray for our, our president, pray for our country, pray for his counselors, pray for the upcoming election uh, and everything that's going on with that. Uh, pray for our military and our law, our law enforcement. Then also remember our first responders, uh, our nurses, our doctors, uh, our medical professionals and uh, the hospital staff. Uh, you know, uh, they're, they're, they're the ones having to deal with uh, the blunt of this and so pray for them pray that they'll be able to get rest and and not be exposed and and so much pray for these factory workers that are trying to make these adjustments to help get this equipment out uh, pray for them and uh, just pray for wisdom in this time for our leadership for our governor uh, for those that are helping her pray for the ministries of parkview baptist church as they're on hold i know brother uh, lewis is is uh, working with the ru uh, trying to help them out. Uh, I appreciate his ministry with that. appreciate the ministry of the teen department as they're reaching out to the teens at this time. So pray for them. And uh, of course, the ladies uh, that had their uh, Bible uh, study yesterday. Uh, I hope that that was a blessing to all the ladies that watched that. Uh, so just uh, continue to remember those uh, different ministries as they're going on and uh, for their leadership. And then for the ministries that are on hold right now, uh, pray for them. I'm going to pray for our, our pastoral staff, uh, our deacons and departmental leaders as they're helping us with uh, just trying to keep a uh, check on everyone, make sure everybody's doing okay and, uh, and getting along well through this time. And then do uh, remember, as we mentioned already, our missionaries, pray for them as they're uh, all around the world serving, uh, just as our military serves on our behalf uh, for our nation, our missionaries serve on our behalf for our church. And so pray for them as they're uh, dealing with this in the different countries that they're in, that God will give them grace and protection uh, through this time. But just remember to pray one for another. And uh, if we can be of any help, uh, feel free to uh, give us a call, give us a text. Uh, reach out, please, by all means. Uh, like I said before, we can't help if we don't know. And so let's have a word of prayer, and uh, then we'll, we'll let you get back to your quarantine whatever you're doing before now. So, all right, let's pray. Father, we do thank you so much for our church. And Lord, we thank you for how uh, already uh, through these uh, first couple of weeks, we've seen the love one towards another. And, and Lord, it's been so good to uh, be able to call and, and check on folks and, and find out, especially that they've already been checked on, they've already been uh, reached out to. And Lord, I just pray that you would continue to 
to use our, our church family to, to show love one towards another. We just thank you so much for that. Lord, so many requests. Uh, we think of those that are recovering from uh, illness, dear Lord, and surgery, and Miss Imogene with her fall. And uh, Lord, I just, I pray you be with everyone and help them through this time. Lord, I pray for our president and for his counselors, for our governor and her counselors. Lord, think of our military, think of our medical professionals, dear God, as they're on the front lines during this time serving and uh, Lord, giving so much of themselves to, to try to help uh, those that are sick and to try to protect those that aren't. And so Lord, I pray you just would bless them and be with them through this time. Uh, be with our church, dear God, and, and Lord, we just thank you so much for the, the people that make it up. And I pray you just would be with them, give them peace, and Lord, may they feel your presence through this time. We'll thank you for that. Bless us, dear God, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you all have a good evening, and uh, we'll be reaching out to you. Uh, again, uh, Pastor's going to do a video, I think, between now and Sunday. And uh, then, of course, we'll be live streaming on Facebook and hopefully on YouTube. Uh, we're, still, we're still working out the kinks. Uh, technology is wonderful until it doesn't work, and then it's not wonderful. And you want to, you, you really just want to drive up to where they, they produce these things and have a word with them. But so pray for us uh, and appreciate everybody. I, I really do appreciate your positive comments on how everything's been going and hope it's been a blessing to you. Y'all have a good night and we'll talk to you later.